This is boxes and boxes of uh, just stuff. It's full of like the most random stuff. Like this is like a play iPhone. Like it makes like children sounds. Like this makes sense to me. This is a video idea, except for you guys that probably makes no sense. There's also things from previous videos that like you guys have probably seen like a cast of my face. What do you think of that, Salem? <laughs> so much random stuff from videos that have existed and videos that never existed. A milk bottle. A Swedish English cookbook. <laughs> I think this was a video idea. This might be the best or worst video idea ever. The comment section will let me know. All of these things, I know exactly what video they were supposed to be for. The video idea for this one was testing cooking sets by Yummy Nummies. Like, I still might make this one, actually. Food gadgets from Japan. Think. I'm going to film a whole video of rejected video ideas. So I'm going to show you the gadget, we're going to test it out, and I'm going to tell you what video that was originally supposed to be. This is either genius or not, so... Some of these are so dumb and random that I'm just apologizing in advance. I managed to nail it down to these gadgets right here. We're gonna finally give them a purpose and test these out. Let's dive in. I think the video idea for this one was things that I bought from Instagram adverts. This was a video idea from like two years ago. I never made it. The reason why this video never happened was because 60% of the things that I bought from Instagram, it never arrived. So I ended up with like three things maybe. So this is the gadget, um, very simple looking, and this is the name of it, it's called a dunking body. It's a way for you to soak your cookies in your milk. You soak the cookies and then you can eat them without making a mess. I think that's the whole point of it. It's also a color changing cup. Okay, step number one, place cookie tray into glass. Okay, so this is the cookie tray. Wait, how does this work? All right, so it's been washed. We're gonna start with the Oreos, but I just wanna say that whenever I dunk a cookie in milk, I don't have many issues. I dunk like half of it, I eat it, and then I grab from the little tip. So the milk goes in first, and the little tray's got little holes. So when you're pouring the milk up to the top, it says to fill it up all the way to this little line on top. What happens if I just remove the... Oh, oh no, oh no. I did something really stupid. My doctor trying to find a heartbeat. So we're gonna put the Oreo in the little tray and then we're just going to dunk it. <sighs> did you see that the Oreo floats? The Oreo stays on top. I'm like trying to show you. In the image, the Oreo stays in there. Okay, now it's going, okay. So now I guess you just grab it and you just eat it. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it was the type of cookie that I used. It doesn't seem to work too well, I'm gonna be honest. I will still give it a try with one of these, but I don't think it works. It doesn't quite fit. Oh no. All the cookies stay on top, they don't fully submerge, and then you still have to get your fingers all like wet, which is exactly the same thing as like doing it in first. But actually, if I did it without this gadget, I could just. It's never been an issue to me. I don't think this is it. <laughs> like this is, oh no, he broke. No, 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 no. This is kind of cool if you give it to like a child. This is not something that I think you'd use on the daily basis. I don't think this is it. Like it just floats, that defeats the whole purpose. One of my six year old cousins is gonna love it. The video idea for this one was gadgets that you can use to improve your microwave. <laughs> Like, you see why these videos never turned out to be anything. I was thinking of, like, students or people who only have a microwave to make food with, trying to help people to get creative, I don't know. So this is a way of making potato chips or crisps in three minutes in the microwave. Like, three minutes, potato crisps? And this comes with, like, the full... You only really need potatoes for this, and then I think this is to, like, slice the potatoes. I think this comes from France, so I'm not gonna apologize to French people watching this video because you guys made this. I'm gonna cut the potato in half because I think this will help. Me and using a blade is a very scary thing. Oh my god, I'm gonna cut my fingers. How many can you make at the same time? Quite a lot actually. Look at that. All of this is... You can't do it too quickly because you kind of have to lift it to get the potato out. I'm an idiot. You're supposed to use this to make it safe. I actually prefer to just use my fingers for this. I'm probably not gonna use all the spaces, but it's actually a really good thing, the fact that you can make quite a lot. The instructions are in French, so I'm gonna try my best. 
try and share this poser micro on there the three deadly sins so i'm using 800 watts so i'm gonna cook this for three minutes let's hope that this is gonna make potato chips should we put some salt in it it's kind of hard to season it because it's like it's working and today we've learned horizontal seasoning. I'm gonna microwave this for three minutes and I'm hoping and praying to the French gods and the French chefs and ratatouille. <sighs> Why do they flop like that? It kinda looks like a potato chip, I'm not gonna lie, if it wasn't for the fact that it's like soft. Maybe these need longer? We're gonna do one more minute and see if they become crispier. Oh my god, these are definitely gonna be crispy now. Do you see these black bits on it? But to be fair, when you get crisps from a package, they also look like that. It's not too bad. This might be the greatest invention ever. We could have done like paprika or something like that. The crispiness is there. You basically have to push it until they have these like marks on it. That's when you know it's ready. But listen to this. A life changing gadget. My life will never be the same. This one is staying in my kitchen. I feel so bad that I kept this amazing gadget in a box for the last two years. Everyone's gonna think that I've lost my mind, but there was this video idea that I've always wanted to do, which was to test out food gadgets that you can use with eggs and with eggs only, because there's so many, that's such a huge... When you look up food gadgets, 60% of them are related to eggs, so I thought it would be genius to transform that into a video. No one cares. No one cares about eggs that much. I've realize that so that video never happened this is called an egg opener one thing that i do very often is baking like if i'm not filming i'm probably baking something just for the fun i'm not good at it and my least favorite thing because i have a thing with textures one of my least favorite thing is to crack eggs because the whole thing is like it's so messy so this gadget is supposed to allow you to crack an egg without getting your hands dirty which would be incredible the real test will be whether there's going to be eggshells in it or not so we've got medium-sized eggs to make this fully fair there's like a blade on top and then you push the egg <gasps> That looks like a torture device. Look at the way that moves. So that's kind of what it looks. It's gonna be hard to show you this one because I have to keep it like that. So we got the egg in it and we're gonna press. Please work, please work. I have no idea how that happened. Let me see if I could get rid of this. I'm gonna get emotional because a huge issue in my life has just been fixed, but I don't even have to try it again because 100% this works. Like zero eggshells. And to me, this is like the most beautiful part. This is the second time in a row that I'm clapping for a gadget. I'm speechless. I wanna move on to the next one. Things are getting way more exciting than I anticipated. I can't tell you the name of this next gadget because the whole thing is written in Japanese, I think. I ordered this all the way from Japan. I think the video idea for it was, it was either food gadgets from Japan, something similar. This is supposed to improve the experience of drinking a beer. And I'm not gonna be able to tell you much because I actually can't read the instructions. Everything is fully in a foreign language. This is an alcohol-free beer, but I've also got a real one in case this doesn't work. I could be wrong because I've never drank beer in my life, but I think when you do it at home, it doesn't create that foam on top. That's when you go to like a restaurant. So this machine will create that foam out of a can. So out of like something that you can do at home or buy from the supermarket. I know that it needs batteries. Okay, four, that's exactly how many I've got. Oh, let me switch it off. This is the cup in which the foam is going to be created. This is so, like there's so many little pieces to this. And then this little thing goes. So maybe then we switch it on. Okay, so step number one, we're gonna need our beer. The amount that you need to make the foam, if this works, is very small. So what we're supposed to do is put the beer in here. This is literally probably not even a tablespoon. And then, so when we press on, this should create the foam. 
Wait, 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 wait. I just realized you're supposed to put in five tablespoons, not one. Let me try this again. So we did one, two, we're gonna try this again. Okay, so it's been around one minute, so I'm gonna pour the beer, which actually, it's making quite a lot of foam. Now I look like a clown. Why did I have to get the creamier beer in history? Like, I'm just gonna add it on top, so, okay. So, you're supposed to use the scoop. <laughs> wow, that is... I would say that it could have been the brand of beer or the type of beer that made the machine not make foam. Except when I poured it myself, I got a lot of foam. I don't know if I did this wrong and if I did, I will fix it on a future gadgets video and try it again. And I did have great expectations about this one, but... When I said that I was taking this egg video very seriously, like I meant it, I had so many gadgets prepared for this video. So this gadget is called eggy and it's a really cute chicken. Microwave an egg and bake in quickly without the mess. This is a way to make a breakfast sandwich in one go. Like you literally only have to crack the egg, put the bacon in, put it in the microwave and it's ready. It comes with instructions on the inside. Turns out it's not that quick and it's not that easy. Yes, it only takes 45 seconds for the bacon to cook. So basically you have to cook the bacon first, then the egg and the bacon again for two minutes and 30 seconds. It's so complicated that if I lost this, I would never use it again. So I'm gonna cut the bacon into two pieces just to make sure it doesn't like overlay. I'm using only one piece of bacon just to really make sure, like I don't wanna overdo it and then it's my fault if this doesn't work. Replace egg holder and cover. Wait, what? Let me try it in French. Replacer le coq, le coq. Le coquetier. Okay, so first of all, this goes in the microwave for 45 seconds. And by the way, they use as a reference a thousand watts. I have a feeling this is gonna sizzle. Okay. <gasps> oh no! <gasps> it's like pork crunch. It asks to cook the bacon for an extra two minutes and 30 seconds. I'm gonna do a full amount of bacon, the exact amount that anyone, any normal person would use for a breakfast sandwich. This seems, it looks like bacon from a one star hotel. Kind of raw, but like still free on booking.com. So. so we're gonna move on to the egg. So we put this back in place. This is gonna make an appearance in every single one of my videos from now on. Wow. Pierce the egg yolk a numerous times. That's so weird. Put the cover back on in microwave for two minutes and 30 seconds at 50% power. So here we've got our English muffin. I mean, usually I would toast it, but you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. So now we wait. I think it is entirely possible that this worked. The egg seems cooked. The bacon is a little on the pale side. We got two different extreme results. Is that what they do at McDonald's? This explains so much. Ouch! So I'm gonna try to flip the egg into our muffin. Oh my god, it doesn't come out. It is definitely round. It looks kind of similar to the ones from McDonald's. The bacon on the other hand, I'm gonna say that's slightly under. I will bite into this once I cook the bacon a little bit longer. It comes down to the level of steps in this, like having to cook things separately. You might as well get a frying pan and then cook everything. I don't think there's a lot of use to this, but I have a feeling that we got some egg gadgets to redeem ourselves. Just simply looking at this next gadget, it makes me so mad because this is another one of those that it was supposed to be for the food gadgets that I bought from Instagram. Not only took like four months to come to my house, I had to order it twice. So this is supposed to be one of those machines. If you have an Instagram account, you have seen this. You're supposed to roll it and cut the watermelon into little cubes instantly. It's a long gadget. My watermelon is so tiny. It doesn't have any instructions, but I can see from the image, like it's pretty clear. Like for as much as I want to be mad at this, it seems to make sense. 
if you ever consider buying anything from Instagram or your family or your friends, just don't. I have been the clown. Instagram has made me the clown too many times. So I'm going to cut the front as well. So I think you're supposed to create like a, like a 90 degree clean cut angle. That is basically it. So now we press this in there and it's supposed to cut it into cubes. How? No idea. <laughs> Let me do it again. It's a cube. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty close. Like, and also, this is both satisfying and wrong and disturbing at the same time. Let me try doing it again. Never get tired of that. Okay, this last one, I feel like I don't have enough for a full one. From far away, this looks like a perfect cube, but from up close, it's not perfect. It's kind of like, it's like messy in some angles. Like if you care that much about perfection, maybe not for you, but for me, this looks really, really cool. I'm not mad at the makers of this. Like, I don't care. I'm mad at Instagram for allowing things that are like scams, basically. But you know what? I would do it again. I would buy it twice. This is incredible. Wow. The video idea for this next gadget was food gadgets that are electronic. This was... This is such a bad video idea. This is an electronic salt and pepper set. You no, know, it's kind of annoying sometimes. It is now, but when you use a lot of amounts of salt, it definitely like gets to a point where like, I'm over this. It could be that all along we needed an electronic salt and pepper. This one was low key, just an excuse for me to buy it. Oh. That is beautiful though. It's got an LED light for precision. Wow, that's one thing I never knew I needed. Let me start by placing the batteries. How do you put the stuff in here? Oh, okay. It's a very tiny hole, like really tiny. Okay, that should be sufficient. Let me test out the LED for precision. Wait, the LED only comes on after you're already pressing it. I'm not sold on the LED. I expected it to be like a laser, almost like precision. Let me find the part of the steak that needs more seasoning. Now I'm gonna tell you the real reason why I bought this. When you go to McDonald's and you get an Oreo McFlurry and they sprinkle some Oreos on top, I always wanted a machine that does the sprinkling. So I've got some crushed Oreos here, just the dry part. So I'm gonna try putting it in. I mean, it's basically like pepper, right? So imagine you're eating like a pancake, ice cream, anything that could take like a nice seasoning of crushed Oreos. It's way thinner than I expected. You might have to do it for like a good minute, but it works. This will take my presentation of ice cream to the next level. Look at the effect I did around the plate. Am I going to replace my current ones? Probably not, but I'm gonna keep these on the side just if I really want to impress someone like like a fancy dinner or I don't have any friends. This next one, it's tiny, but if this works, the potential in this, there's a strong possibility that I didn't buy this for a video and I bought it for myself. Allow me to explain to you how incredible this is. This is an issue that I have because I don't have like a panini press, one of those press down toaster thingies. So the amount of times in which I crave a grilled cheese sandwich, I don't want to get a frying pan just to make a cheese toasty. Like that's way too much work. Toaster bag. <laughs> the simplicity of this. With this, you can make a grilled cheese sandwich in your toaster. Wow, that doesn't fit actually. Well, kind of. I'm gonna do like a very simple, I'm not even gonna put butter, just cheese and bread to see if we can get the cheese to melt. I'm gonna do quite a lot of cheese because let's be honest, we put the bread in it. I think each bag takes up to 20 uses or something crazy like that. So it comes with a total of 10 bags. This is not easy, I'm not gonna lie. I'm so confused. What if we flatten it down? I had so many hopes for you. Oh my God, does this not work? Okay, it is working now. That was a nightmare to fit in. Like really hard to fit in. Also me in middle school. Kind of fits perfectly. It's like tight in there. So there goes our grilled cheese sandwich. Imagine all the other things that we could cook in a toaster. Like the potential of this machine has just unlocked. I love these, but they take a long time and you can only make them in the oven. They don't work in the microwave because they go weirdly soggy. I'm well aware this might not work. But if it does, imagine the payoff. And sometimes in life, we just need a risk taker. That's why. I oh my God, that slides perfectly. This is gonna be the best day of my life. Either that, we're gonna set the kitchen on fire. Bon appetit. Wait, is that it? 
It's smoking a lot, but the cheese is not melted. So I don't know exactly what to do. Let me see if I can show you, but the cheese is not melted in the center, but then it's the toast is black. The first thing I'm gonna check out is the cheese toast. The cheese, it's all in the bottom. It just melted down and it's uncooked on top, like fully uncooked. I can't even get it out. Oh, all the cheese is coming out as well. That's good. <gasps> that is so delicious looking. The cheese melting is incredible. Like I want it. The top of it wasn't actually melting. So it was all sinking down to the bottom. This is not what I expected when I ordered a cheese toasty. Let's have a look at the pizza. Oh my God, once again, the cheese all in the bottom. Oh my God. Where's my cheese? Where's the cheese? All the cheese is right here. You order some cheese with your pizza. Yeah, we put it on the, on the back, on the side. This is to further prove to you how serious I was about this egg video. Like I really thought this one, however, I'm actually very excited about trying. This is an egg boiler with poacher. I don't know why whenever I cook eggs, I can never get the egg yolk to stay like soft and nice. Like when you go to like a restaurant, this machine, does it for you. So you don't even have to worry about cooking times. You put the eggs in it and I think that's it. They also had one of these in which the lid was see-through so you can see the eggs getting cooked or steamed, but it was more expensive. Oh my God, it looks like an egg. So you can choose if you're gonna make boiled eggs or if you're gonna make poached eggs. Fill the measuring cup with the required amount of water. If you fill it up to the bottom, it's soft. If you fill it up all the way to the top, it's gonna cook it hard. And if you do it in between, it's medium. This is like the opposite of the other egg one in the microwave. This one is way too simple that I don't know if I'm believing in all of that. I think I'm gonna do seven eggs. I don't think there's like a right way to place it. Apparently this is the amount of water that takes. That's incredibly little. Suddenly I'm questioning my choices, but okay. So we're gonna put the lid on it. So we switch it on. Like, does he make any sound? That's really quick. I feel like when I'm playing Pokemon and I take my Pokemons to the nurse, except I'm gonna eat them after. Either my eggs are cooked or or the purge has just started outside. I would say it took a total of seven minutes. That is crazy to me. This is genius. This is such an easy way to get them to stop cooking quickly. As you can see, our eggs are cooked, but here's a plot twist. <laughs> no one saw this coming. This is another different gadget. I swear, I promise this is the last egg gadget for the whole video. Pull up the ball and release. The spring mechanism will cause a vibration the sharp edge in the dome and score the shell. Perfect eggshell cutting. This is supposed to remove the top of the egg and we can see if they cook. <gasps> Should we try this again? One, two. Okay, I think that worked. It's actually working. Weirdly, that worked. Look, it's overcooked. That's not soft. 25% of it is like soft, but it's still, I would say this is medium, right? Let me try with a different one. It's like overly done. You can see that because the yellow is not even soft. I don't eat eggs that often, so it's actually hard for me to tell. But like, you can see that it's soft in the very center only, but this whole bit came off like solid. Before we move on to the next one, I'm gonna be fully honest and say that even though like, obviously I approve of this one, I would also approve of the egg boiler just because seven minutes to cook seven eggs. If you eat eggs a lot, or if you have like a big family, that's incredible. The video idea I had for this, like it's actually a good video idea. It just never happened because it was too difficult to find more content for it. Ways 
to recycle or just to reduce, not just to reduce plastic, but ways that are connected with food that we could use to help the environment, basically. There's an image in here that kind of, wow, there's a lot of instructions on the inside as well. Why do they always do that? I wouldn't know before I buy. On this side is what happens in your bin when you throw away like a can or bottles, it's like filled to the top. And using this gadget, you can reduce the amount of space in your bins by like that much, which is, like half. It's supposed to work for all these different types, which is great because if you get one of these, like this is actually something that I realistically would keep in my kitchen because it's so small. There's a little hole in here. It's so big, it's literally hard to fit on camera. This is supposed to go like that. Oh my God. <laughs> so now you have to be quick and put the lid on it and close it. I might have single-handedly just saved the planet. Okay. This was difficult, I'm not gonna lie, but it's doable. I feel like I could almost do this with my feet. Like if I put this on the floor and just press it down. So let me try it with a can. I feel like it'll be even easier, right? But I mean, a can is made of metal. That was actually surprisingly easy after you squish it down. Oh! <gasps> We saved the environment. That's not as good. Wow, that was definitely the easiest so far. That might have been the smoothest one yet, but I would say that like, it was honestly cheap and it's minimal and it does help the environment. So I'm not mad at this. When I first bought this gadget, I thought that this was automated. I thought it was like electronic. On eBay, it made it seem like this was like a robot, but when it arrived, it's just a manual machine, which I was really disappointed. Quickly pits six cherries at once. Not a thing that I thought I needed in my life for sure. It's a really cool looking machine. So like you can see how I thought that this was slightly better. It looks like the egg one. I'm gonna put the six cherries. It's good that it does six all at once. I think this was expensive because I basically thought I was paying for like a, a food robot. But I mean, it is sturdy, so I guess it was worth it. It's got these little blades on here. And then when we press it down, this is supposed to remove all the pits. I'm gonna try to give you guys a close up. Okay, I'm gonna press it down. Oh my God, that was really quick. I think that worked. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's slice them up. No stone and not a lot of damage to it as well. If you eat cherries a lot, I guess this could be useful. Or if you like cooking with cherries as well, cause you'd still have to remove it. People who love cherries, I mean, go for it. By no means fully approved. For this last one, I saved what is probably one of the most bizarre video ideas I've ever had but also an experience that I always, that I always wanted, that I always wanted to experience. This is a full size real honeycomb. I don't even know if you can see it on camera, but like all those little like details, I've never seen this up close. There was a period of time last year in which I was obsessed with ASMR videos that were recommended to me on Instagram. And it was mostly when people were eating bizarre foods that were like wet and like squishy and they made the weirdest sounds that made me so uncomfortable, but also I couldn't stop watching. So I planned, I'm gonna do a video on that. Like how weird is that? Just eat foods that, first of all, never eaten before. Then I told the video idea to someone, one of my friends, and they were like, no, nobody wants that from you. Honey packed into hexagonal shapes, bursting with flavor. If you can get away without eating it straight out of the tub, why not try it to spread it on toast? That is so weird. I don't even know if I can do justice to how strange. <gasps> That's like wax. Oh, that is wax, right? I have never in my life ever eaten anything that it was so sweet that it tasted spicy. It was like bursting wax with like 
honey in the center. I can save it and maybe put it on toast. That will be good. I would never bite into that ever again. My throat feels spicy. I might be allergic to this. A video that I most likely will never forget just because it was so weird, but it was an interesting idea to make a video of rejected video ideas. So let me know if you guys enjoy it. If you'd like to see any of these videos fully, let me know which one. Or if you just want to watch a part two of something as random as this, because it's truly random. None of these ideas are fully connected, but I still hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, it would mean the world to me if you could give it a like, because it lets me know if you like this video over a different one. And if you haven't subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, scroll down, there's a subscribe button, a notification bell, and you know what to do. Like, I hate that I even have to say this in every video, but I do want you guys to watch my videos and not miss out. And subscribing, it's all it does. I remind myself on the daily that asking you to subscribe is one, annoying, but, but it's also free, so I know I'm not doing anything bad. So it's always good to remind you that if you don't like me, if you don't like my videos, you do not have to subscribe, and that's perfectly fine. I was gonna say that there's a lot of good things to watch on YouTube, but there's not that much to watch on YouTube right now. I don't know if that's just my subscription box. This video was extra long because there was a lot of stuff to fit in it and I still have more. So I hope that you didn't hate like longer videos. I always feel like you guys enjoy longer videos, but it's just a test. And I will see you guys on my next video, which is I'm gonna try not to keep it as long, but you never know what could happen. Bye bye.